Good afternoon. Welcome to our first webinar and thanks for your participation. This is the, uh, the title of our webinar. It's the first of two, one on RRNDI and biosciences. The second will be on the implementation of RRNDI in specific research organizations. In each webinar, we will have a first part of the pre with presentation and half of the time will be up for question and discussion. So prepare your question and comments. Now I would ask you to mute your microphones during the presentation. The first webinar has three teams after a very brief introduction to the project. We already saw a video. We will make a general presentation of the model for the practice of RRNDI in biosciences organization based on our experiences in StarBio2. One presentation of our partner of the University of Brema on the role of education for mobilizing on RRNDI. Two presentations of our international colleagues about their experiences and ideas about RRNDI in non European context. This the Star BIOS 2 project has the objective of promoting structural change towards RRNDI in the biosciences. We have implemented action plans to practice RRNDI in biosciences organizations and some reflection activities to learn lessons from the project experience. These are some of the consortium members. This is a list of the type of the organization of the consortium. We would like to talk with you on what we have learned today. Let's start from the context. Today's world is so dependent on science and technology that our society and culture are revolving around it. If we assume that science and biosciences co-evolve with society, it means that as society members we have we are responsible and dependent on science and scientists. We are responsible and dependent on society. Practicing error and I can help to solve these challenges. What is also challenging is that the science is changing and society is changing too. Error and I is therefore related to the coevolution of science and societies that creates uncertainty about the future and research and innovation and dilemmas about decisions to take to cope with this uncertainty. Error and I is aimed at considering these problems, anticipating and assessing potential implications. 
let's have a look at this definition. The European Commission defines a RRNDI as an approach to research that anticipates and assesses potential implication and societal expectations so that it is possible to foster inclusive and sustainable research and innovation. Some scholars define responsible innovation differently as a way of taking care of, for, of the future through collective stewardship of science and innovation in the present. This has various possible meanings. For example, we are societal actors, whether you are a researcher, policymaker, businesswoman or man, or a regular citizen. RRNDI means that we, as societal actors, work together during the world research and innovation process to make sure that the process and the, its outcomes agree with our values, needs and expectations. Biosciences, according to us, needs RRNDI to make sure that the research and innovation are aligned with the values and needs of the society that we live in. One basic idea of our approach is de facto RRNDI. That means that some bioscientists already practice somehow RRNDI by acting for maintaining contacts with various stakeholders in different ways and for various purposes. Unfortunately, oftentimes, this is not done systematically. Another basic idea is that RRNDI needs to be practiced through self-interpretation. In today's presentation, we are presenting our model on RRNDI and structural changes for biosciences research organization based on this idea. In the second webinar on uh, 17th February, we will discuss practical guidance and examples based on our experiences. You can find the guidelines at this link. Let's talk now a little bit about RRNDI in biosciences. A transition is in science is taking place. The autonomy of scientists is, increasing, is increasingly constrained by an overall change in the way science is shaped and managed, affecting its structure, normal values and practices. Research activities in the biosciences are more and more characterized by cooperative practices in scientific production, transdisciplinarity, diversity of sites where research is carried out. Research is increasingly context-driven. There are many diverse sectors that have a say on research quality control, not only peers, and in the promotion of accountability of science. This process has a lot of implications. Increasing expectation about economic impacts of science, increasing role of policymakers in leading and steering the research process, a growing regulation and standardization of research, a growing competition for funds among scientists, and the relationship between the university, governments, and industry enter the public discourse. We can represent this situation using the idea of transition. From a situation that we define of small laboratories carrying out their own research with, with just some relations. To an open laboratory configuration with a, uh, in which there is a wide connection. This transition produces various problems in the scientific world. For example, precariousness of researcher, women discrimination in science, open circulation of results becomes more and more difficult. The standardization and fragmentation of science. And science and society relations change accordingly, and this causes problems such as lack of trust and diffusion of various anti-sciences attitudes and stereotypes, there is also a greater demand for opening the science process, and this causes a certain reluctance of scientists. For us, RRNDI is a possible way to approach this situation. The approach of the European Commission is based on the promotion of activities in the areas listed in this slide. They are termed RRNDI keys. From the practice of our project emerges that taking on social responsibility helps in managing the relationship between science and society, while maintaining a strong focus on research and innovation mission. The RRNDI keys represent a good entry point for practicing RRNDI. The RRNDI keys are areas of the life of scientific communities where the, uh, the science-society relations emerge as critical. 
contextualization is the first thing to do to implement a Rendain Biosciences organization. Each organization should think about its social and professional networks, the research policies that are relevant to it, the ways in which and relations are maintained with external actors and networks. Important are the challenges faced by biosciences in general and consequently by each research organization. Some of these challenges are listed in the slide. Biological revolution, stakeholders' needs. In these days, we say, see also the uh, outbreak of uh, pandemics. Our model contains some principles of action. Each organization should look at RRD in order to promote better research and address the problem it faces. Furthermore, each organization either, or even group should develop its own approach to RRI that is tailored to its specific context. Some steps for doing this are presented in our model. They concern the research vision, the research process, and some characteristic of the research organization. In particular, <laughs> RRD implementation means considering that the research organizations are complex, include diverse professionals and not only researchers, have their own rules, mission, etc. Now I leave the floor to our partners in StarBios2. First, there is a presentation of the colleagues from Bremen. They will talk of their action plan, the process they followed, with a focus on education as a trigger for RRD. It was one of the six action plans implemented during Start Bias 2. We all learned a lot from these experiences. After that, two colleagues from South Africa and the US will talk about the ways in which they understand the responsibility in their research organization. I leave the floor now to Doris Webs. Uh, Esther, please, uh, Doris. Welcome to our webinar. Um, I have the pleasure uh, to present you the Star Bios Action Plan of the University of Bremen and some experiences of its implementation. Our main objective was to initiate a RR structural transformation process at the Faculty of Biology and Chemistry, that's one of the 12 faculties of the University of Bremen, in a whole institutional approach. Therefore, we set up a core team of scientists and science educators and followed a bottom-up, top-down uh, approach by involving all the important stakeholders and representatives of different status groups, the researchers, doctoral students and students in the process. We used science education as a trigger to attain the, res the responsible research. This uh, slide summarizes our roadmap. In step uh, one, we started with a comprehensive state-of-the-art analysis of literature and research projects. The findings of the analysis built the basis for the development of an interview guideline. The interviews, they were conducted with different focus groups, doctoral students, students, researchers, and educators in total, 21 persons. Based on the interview results, a RRI questionnaire survey was conducted online at the faculty. From the findings of the interviews and the questionnaire survey, criteria for the six successful promotion of the specific RRI issues were deduced. The criteria formed the basis of a first draft of recommendations. Step two, the development of RRI specific edu educational building blocks compromised, comprised the development of RRI modules and workshops, as well as reflective activities in respect to the RRI key's gender, engagement, ethics, and open access. The set of RRI specific activities were conducted and evaluated within the different focus groups or in the outreach lab backstage science with school classes. They formed a flexible training program targeted to the different status groups. The results of the evaluation were a reversal contribution to the further development of their RRI recommendations. For the really challenging structural transformation process, the dialogue and negotiation of RRI issues 
with stakeholders and status group members were of importance. To foster sensitiveness and awareness in respect to RRI, we made our educational building blocks and reflective activities visible by a user-friendly website um, with our online uh, toolbox and highlighted good practice examples. Our vision, a common shared RRI mission statement um, at faculty level. Uh, here is our booklet of RRI recommendations towards the sustainable and open science enhancing RRI in biosciences at the University of Bremen. In total, 35 recommendations were grouped according to their RRI issues, public engagement, gender, ethics, open access, and education. Um, as an example, I give a short overview about the recommendations in respect to ethics. They are grouped into the uh, subsections good research practice, anchoring ethics in curricula for young scientists, and protection of living beings in research. In respect to the subsection good research practice, four recommendations are formulated. They are about good scientific practice, dealing with scientific misconduct, dealing with uncertainty and risk, and awareness of handling research data. To read more, um, look at our uh, RRI booklet. You can download it from the Bremen University website. Look at our um, publications, look at the StarBios uh, uh, website, uh, or on, into our toolbox or blogs on Uni Bremen. Um, as an epilogue, I can report that StarBios has become part of the future concept 2025 of the Faculty of Biology. It is now negotiated that all research groups in biosciences of the faculty are strongly involved in the expansion of responsible uh, research and innovation, the implementation of the university's transfer strategy, the further de development of a high performance didactics that combines research and teaching with modern technologies, the further development of the existing concept of RRI, and the participation in the follow-up project of StarBios entitled RESBIOS. I thank you uh, for listening. Uh, thank you, uh, Doris. And uh, now it's the turn of Marietta, our colleague who works in South Africa. They are <clears throat> developing uh, an action plan that takes into account the peculiar issues of scientific development in Africa and in their, in their country. Please, Marriott. So my name is Vivian, and I'm a scientific researcher at the ICGB. That's the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. We're uh, the, one of the international partners in this project. And um, uh, our action plan, uh, we only started on our action plan towards the end of the project. Therefore, our action plan will be presented at the final workshop in Cape Town in March. The ICGB has already got uh, many activities and um, in, in all of the, the keys. So our, our action plan will build on these. So the ICGP um, is an international organization with the unique mandate of fostering research, capacity building and technology transfer in life sciences. The map here shows the 66 countries that are members of our organization. 21 of these countries are based in Africa. Today we're going to talk about um, or I'm going to talk about considering culture in our RRI activities. And um, because the Cape Town component, which I am based at, is in, is in South Africa, and um, that's the most southern country in Africa, 
our focus will be specifically on Africa. Bioethics is part of responsible research and innovation because it ensures that the way in which we conduct our research is morally justifiable and socially acceptable. But of course, this cannot be a one-size-fits-all solution because what you and I consider socially acceptable differs. And um, this differs between cultural groups as well. So let's look at Africa. Africa has more than 54 countries that speaks more than three or that has more than 3,000 ethnic groups and speak more than 2,000 languages. True. So this means that bioethic practices needs to consider and embrace our cultural diversity. Um, it needs to be culturally conscious or have a cultural mindfulness. Um, although the impact of cultural differences in bioethics has been widely recognized, it remains Western dominated. In bioethics, the voice of Africa is not sufficiently included in the development of guidelines. In other words, it lacks Africanicity or Africanness. The African cultural morals and beliefs are grounded in a natural sociality of uh, human beings that embodies a social or communitarian ethics. This is in contrast to the individual ethics. African bioethics should therefore embody the spirit of Ubuntu. In the words of our former president um, of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, in Africa, there's this concept known as Ubuntu, the profound sense that we are human only through the humanity of others, that if we are to accomplish anything in this world, it will be equally measured due to the work and achievements of others. The, the Nguni word Ubuntu refers to the foundation as of African ethics. Um, it can be defined as the moral quality of being human. I am because we are. It's generosity, irrespective of man's position. Um, there's some very good examples in the reference below of how Ubuntu can be applied to conflicting ethical problems uh, within the public health and medicine in our continent. The famous South African humanitarian or human rights activist um, Desmond Tutu said, Ubuntu is very difficult to render in the Western language. It speaks of, your, of the very essence of being human. You are, you're generous, you're hospital, you are friendly, you're caring, you're compassionate, and you share what you have. It's to say, my humanity is inexplicably bound up in yours. We belong in the bundle of life. Ubuntu shifts the everyday meaning of bioethics to the value of the African people. It embraces the core value that individuals should act in the best interests of the community without causing disadvantage to him or herself. Thank you, in the 11 languages of South Africa. Thank you very much, uh, um, Mariet. Now I leave the floor to our colleagues from the United States. Uh, we had a lot of exchanges in the last months about the responsible research and innovation in their institution. They are developing their action plan centered on the concept of RRNI in the light of technology transfer. Please, Maria. Hello. I'm Maria Salvato, a professor of virology at University of Maryland School of Medicine. And um, today, myself and my colleague, Dr. Francis Ibukan, will um, describe the UMB efforts to promote RRI. Um, Dr. Ibukan is a physician recently in the US from Nigeria, and he'll speak to the UMB global efforts to promote healthcare. My role in StarBios has been to describe our strategic plans, um, how they're implemented and assessed in the end, and to make up an action plan of my own to address areas that could be improved in our strategic plan. So the university makes a strategic plan every five years 
to promote its um, local and global programs. So this slide shows a workshop that we held last February. Um, it was to discuss the transfer of university technology as an activity that must be done in the context of R and I. Um, some of the this uh, photo actually represents the three major types of public engagement on this campus. So um, these students uh, wearing white coats are from the local neighborhood, and so they're. Um, introduced to what it's like to be a bioscientist. Um, that's local and um, for global work, uh, Dr. Kalitsi's group um, has been working globally. My group has as well. And for our union with industry, um, there are several people in our um, campus that are focused on transferring technology to in industry, industrial partners. So the first step of our creating an action plan has been to mobilize internal actors. So we have mobilized people from our Office of Public Engagement that makes our university strategic plan, um, members of the Office of Tech Transfer, uh, and members of translational efforts on campus to translate from bench to bedside. Um, and then there are several people who promote global efforts, Clara Frazier, Dr. Kalitsi, who's our RRI leader here, uh, Jim Caper's group that made the cholera vaccine, the um, global programs, and my lab. So uh, in a context analysis for um, our action plan, we note that the strongest feature of our university is that we're a high-tech island in a um, rather poor neighborhood. And the biggest obstacles are um, poverty, mistrust, and ignorance about our mission. So the second, um, the second step of making our action plan is to um, decide what, um, what topics to focus on. And global um, epidemics that require vaccines and um, local healthcare needs seemed primary. So uh, one of the examples of the um, global problems uh, that need vaccines is cholera and uh, it's taken 4 million people yearly in 1980. Um, Jim Kaper, who was a postdoc at the time, developed uh, an attenuated cholera vaccine in the university here. But due to um, poor reception uh, in Europe and other parts of the world, um, in the decades that follow, uh, this the vaccine wasn't well received. And uh, over after about 40 years, um, the vaccine later obtain a VA approval and license uh, by uh, a company in San Diego and it's back uh, in the market. So this just highlights um, the amount of time and the collaboration of um, industrial efforts uh, that it needs to bring um, a much needed vaccine to the public. The University of Maryland also addressed um, global problems in healthcare through the center for international health, education, and biosecurity. It emerged um, from Bob Brett's field prepper program with the goal to support the development of um, quality health service uh, in um, treating um, infectious um, diseases like HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria, and non communicable diseases like cancer. It also aims to build um, local capacity for effective and sustained outcomes and create continuous learning opportunities to advance knowledge in health science. Um, this is a local program called the Jacques Initiative, and it is meant to build trust within the AIDS community um, and supports people with HIV. And it's also trying to expand into hepatitis because that's 80% of the HIV uh, population has hepatitis. Um, the third arm of the um, public engagement that, that this university does is trying to um, promote inventions and new knowledge and industrialization and commercialization of, of inventions. And um, a teacher who teaches entrepreneurship um, is trying to expand and we're trying to help uh, put her plans into our strategic plan. So our efforts at funding 
include um, getting NIH grants and getting uh, local funds. Um, we're ongoing in negotiation with instructors and partners. In reflecting on what has been accomplished on the university campus, um, we've decided that there are several uh, big areas that have to be changed and put into our strategic plans and action plans. And that's the need for strong ethical leaders, um, that public service should be rewarded and considered a job responsibility rather than segmented off to offices that are devoted to uh, these public services. Um, failures and promotion of women and young scientists, um, in instances of harassment and cover-up of disciplinary actions, and um, visionary programs often struggle with funding and uh, leadership in space. And um, one thing that Francis brought to me that, that's a really good thing to focus on for improving is that we need to be able to share the responsibility for these programs with the people that are most benefiting from these programs. Um, so in summary, um, the University of Maryland is um, proceeding with action plans as a supplement or as an enhancement of its own strategic plan. And uh, these will be presented at the March meeting in South Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Maria. Um, before leaving the floor to your question, let, and I would like to thank you again for uh, your participation. And uh, of course, uh, uh, if you have questions um, from the participants, of course, uh, now you have time to, to raise issues, questions, and provide your comments. Uh, so what I would like to tell you is that uh, I hope that uh, the issues raised in this first webinar could consider by you as something relevant for your activity of uh, bioscientists. Uh, the idea is that uh, um, that is well explained in the guidelines that I invite you to download in our website. The idea is that uh, uh, we can practice and promote RRI by uh, also creating a strong connection with this RRI and our uh, daily research activities. Uh, this is a way to strengthen uh, research on the one end and also to strengthen uh, our uh, relation with, the, with society and address the issues at stake. So I would like to thank you all for uh, your participation and see you on 17th of February. Thank you again. Bye-bye.